when Operation Barbarossa is launched, the world will hold its breath, says Adolf Hitler. And indeed, the world should have. 3.8 million German soldiers, 3,350 tanks, 2,770 aircraft, 7,200 artillery pieces embarked upon the assault of the vast Russian country. So did Operation Barbarossa, uh, was it a success for Germany? Well, I guess in the terms of achieving its goal, destroying the Soviets' will to fight and surrendering, they did not. And they also failed to capture Moscow, which probably could be argued that it would have stopped the will of the Soviets to fight. But I, I like to think that overall they did okay. Because what about on the ground operationally and in battles? How much damage did they inflict compared to their losses? And were their losses that bad that embarking upon Barbarossa caused them to lose the war eventually? So I'd like to look at the numbers. Firstly, check out the German losses. So first of all, this uh, top graph says the losses per, um, per month in the Barbarossa campaign starting June 1941. You can see on this line is the total losses of the killed, prisoner of war, unfit, and wounded. So 97k in the first month, second month 194k, 227k in August peaked, and about 200,000 or so losses in, to the end of December, and 1.23 million losses overall. So when you have a uh, look at the killed counts here, though, you can see that the actual people killed in the battle weren't that much. It may seem a lot, but from the scale of things, uh, the, the, the scale of men, 3 million, 3.8 million attacking on the vast fronts uh, on every single, I guess, uh, uh, area in Russia, it's quite low. Uh, the wounded uh, compared to the killed is quite high, though, as you can see, and the unfit uh, was basically uh, severely wounded. So, <clears throat> tank losses as well, you can see on the bottom, uh, peaked in July and August. Uh, around 8,000 was the biggest tank loss in July, and it totaled at 3.38. So those are the month's comparisons, I'm not sure if that is uh, interesting to you. But you can see that the losses uh, looks high, but uh, you'll see later that it may not be. And this is more specifics on the German losses on this graph. On the left, you can see the tank losses in red, and uh, in the month, uh, for each month, also the new built, and then the rebuilt. So <clears throat> overall, if you combine the rebuilt and new built, it's actually quite uh, quite even to the actual tank losses that they uh, had in Barbarossa. But they're able to replace the tanks that they put on the field. This is actually also... Um, those that were sent to the front. So they had also, they had reserves as well, which weren't sent to the front, but these are the ones sent to the front. <clears throat> so on the bottom left, you can see replace loss by month. So this is the tank losses uh, minus the new built plus rebuilt. December, um, so start from here, June, they actually replaced and built more than they lost. July, the negative 238, 254 in August, but it came to 149 positive in September, October 72. 61 November and December slightly uh, more losses than replaced. But you can see on the pie chart here that the tanks that they were replaced with uh, were a lot better. So you can kind of argue that they actually actually had a better tank uh, replacement, uh, better tanks to replace in an event. And overall, after the end of Barbarossa, had better, better tanks overall. So if you look at the top one, tank losses by tank, you can see the majority of losses, uh, the P-38T, 796 in the Barbarossa campaign. Uh, Panzer 1, 428. Panzer 2, a bit higher. Panzer 3, 176. Uh, Panzer 350 mil, 777. That's quite a lot, actually. But at the bottom, you can see they didn't really replace the P, they didn't replace the P-1s anymore. Uh, so this is uh, the new build. They replaced uh, 777 Panzer 350 mils, one of their best tanks at the time, with 1,193 Panzer 3s. Panzer 4s, uh, they almost replaced the entire arsenal of Panzer 4s, but the Stug 3, 
348 to 140, 104. So uh, in my opinion, there that's a lot more um, quality in their ranks, even though it's slightly less tanks that they replaced with. So I th they, were able, they were able to, um, at the end of Barossa, have better tanks overall. If you look at infantry losses, <coughs> Germans here. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> till I had the flu. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, new replacements <coughs> in the light blue. Dark dark blue is recuperated. So you can see there's quite a lot of new replacements and recuperated troops in each month, peaking in uh, August to more than 100k, 124k of new replacements. And this is the gain, the bottom one here is gains and losses. So this is the total new replacements recuperated. My, uh, and the dark one is the losses. So you can see they're quite even, except with the first, uh, obviously the first part of the war, they didn't replace much because it started, I think, towards the end of June. But later on, nearly on par in July, actually had more replacements uh, sent to the front. In August, September, slightly below, and the rest also still slightly below. But on the left, you can see the actual numbers, minus 177k, for gains and losses. So that's 177,000 men. You could say that uh, it's quite small considering the force that's there, 3.8 million personnel. Just minus 177k from that. You get 33633 three, three or something. It's not much difference. Uh, you, they've gained 1.5 million replacements. 1.23 million lost overall. Wounded 66633k. Uh, killed in action, 175. So this is 175,000. It's a small number if you consider the amount of battles they fought and the amount of casualties they inflict, which we'll see later, which you will see later. So those are the numbers. Pause if you like. Then let's look at the Russian losses. The thing is with the Russian losses, there's so many different sources saying different numbers, but overall they're quite similar, uh, I suppose, relatively similar. So we have the first source here. Now, we don't have, unfortunately have the granularity of the detail for the Soviets, but we have the irreversible losses, 2,841,000, wounded 1,145,000. So I'm, I'm guessing irreversible is those POWs as well, like they've lost the men, um, etc. But you also have um, incidents where, where the Russians are encircled, and pe people just left the front. <clears throat> so they could have been partisans, they could have walked away, went home or something, and they'll probably be included in the reverse reversible, which is including uh, kills in action, etc. So we don't actually have that kill in action figure, but the total losses, um, 3.987700. Uh, Kurovoshev's uh, um, estimate. <clears throat> then you have this other estimate below, <clears throat> which you have the missing in action, it's classified a bit differently, 2,335,000, medical losses 1,336,000,000, deaths 566,000,000, aircraft 2,100 losses, <laughs> considering German had 2,770 aircraft to start with in Barbarossa, and Russians, that's a freaking times 10 ratio there that they killed, uh, deaths 566,852, 566,000. If you compare it to the Germans, compare it to the Germans one, you remember well, there's only 100,000 or so, so for five ratio. Uh, medical losses, 1,336,000. Um, uh, missing in action, 2, 2 million plus. Tanks, 20,500. Germans fielded 3,350 tanks to begin with and probably replaced, replaced about the same amount, so about, um, yeah, 6,000 overall, but if you look at the start of the war, the Soviets had, they had, uh, how many tanks did they have? So I'll go back to my previous uh, thing I created. So if I select the here year, uh, let's say 40, 39, uh, 41 maybe. You can see uh, Soviets had 26,000 here. They only built, replaced one, 31 there. So let's say they had about uh, almost 30,000. They had almost 30,000 tanks at the beginning of Barbarossa. So that means they've lost, uh, wow, <laughs> two thirds of the tanks. Um, mind you though, they replaced a lot of these things because for some reason, I think, um, I really think that Germany underestimated the 
Russians resolved. Um, so the, that what's that quote saying? Um, saying well, let's kick the door in and the whole rotten structure will collapse. Uh, Adolf Hitler quote because of the Winter War and World War One successes, all the successes versus Russia in the past, um, and also so and also the Russian failures in the Winter War uh, caused them to have a low opinion on the Soviets, but. They were able to actually outproduce, you see here, um, 41, 42, they replaced quite a few of their tanks, but their tanks are pretty high quality at this stage, the T-34, but if you go to 42, miraculously, even after all the losses in Barbarossa, Russia was able to just, look, 25,000, bam, replace all their tanks, and etc. They, they must have had a really good, I haven't really looked into production um, of Russia, but they must have a really good mass production strategy in place. So they were able to replace them all. So there's no doubt the Russians were able to replace all these, but I am doubtful that the Germans Germans expected that. So it's not really a, a problem with Barbarossa, it's a problem with declaring on war with Russia as a whole. Because um, I think they were quite successful looking at these stats. Um, so Germany versus Russia, tank losses, boom, 20,000 versus 3.4. Tank infantry losses, 4.2 million, 8 million, versus 1.23 million. Total infantry combat deaths, 0.18 million to 57 million. By the way, Russia's in red, obviously. Uh, total infantry, this is including missing nation POWs, boom. <laughs> 0.04 million to 2.34 million. That's just crazy. Like, that's success, no matter what, I think. Um, I remember, and the quote as well from um, Hitler saying that if I knew Russians had this many tanks, I wouldn't have, I would have thought twice of invading. So it's more, of, yeah, I think it's not because Barbarossa was a failure, it's because they just declared war on Russia in the first place. Because um, that, that's, that's success, in my opinion, in terms of um, kill counts. So if you look at uh, this one here, this is the showing the scale of the encirclements. There were great encirclements in the Germans uh, inflicted on the Russians great encirclements of troops with their blitzkrieg tank tactics. So guns captured, destroyed, 5,412 at Bryansk, Kiev, 3,718, Smolensk, etc. You see the numbers totaling at 26,000 guns lost. Prisoners taken, let's sort it by the highest to lowest. Let's just get the, let's just mention the top one. Kiev, 667,000 men, Bryansk. 663,000 men, tanks sorted by captured, Minx 3,332, Smolensk 3,205, 14,000 tanks, 3 million, 3 million so prisoners taken. That's insane, guys. So I, I, I think they did well, to be honest. Um, they did well. <clears throat> I think much more of the, the actual, they, they were able to replace their tanks, replace the infantry as well. So in terms of the amount of units they had on the field after Barbarossa, they were looking similar, if not, if not in a better position in somewhat, because the Russians have lost a lot more. Um, whereas if they probably waited, the Russians could have built a lot more forces, um, a lot more tanks, better tanks as well. As even after they have uh, after they've lost all the territory in Barbarossa, Russians in 1942 were able to produce 25,000 tanks. That's nuts. So I, also there was um, there's a theory as well where um, there was a lot of changing objectives during the operation Barbarossa, where Army Group Center was halted in its plan advance to Moscow in around August, and they were diverted to Kiev and Leningrad. And a lot of commanders were upset with this, apparently, and then they put hurdles and created administrative and operational uh, problems. But uh, then when Leningrad was threatened, uh, it was changed again, so they had to drive all the way back, costing fuel and logistics and sh operations, and it's, uh, yeah, wasting all this fuel, which they really needed. So, yeah, and looking at the, just want to mention, you're looking at the statistics of the manpower and tanks, it... Um, it doesn't also include or sent to the front. There was other data that shows that only a small portion of these were sent to the Eastern Front to replace them. Uh, funny silly fact is that the German Afrika Korps received more tanks and replacements in 1941 pro rata than the Eastern Front did. 
um, for, for me, uh, 80 years later, Stratton and sitting in his comfy executive chair thinks this is a really stupid thing fighting over the desert. <laughs> um, yeah, so really, I, I think, uh, I think the Russians, sorry, I think the Germans did well in Barbarossa. I sort of end the, end this with the quote from General Franz Halder after the first, uh, after seeing all these statistics or seeing how many how much russians had, had destroyed in the first uh, 14 days it is no exaggeration to say that the russian campaign has been won in 14 days